practice kind of where you've been doing so much for Israel and the third age population. And this is not only a national problem, but an international problem. And your intervention in this contagious to stand there. So now, now it's time for my presentation. Um, one second. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's our point. Uh, that's the point of this whole conference to promote uh, health and longevity research, development, and education. We feel not enough has been done for it. Uh, there was COVID and there was uh, political instability and there was this and there was that. But hopefully, thanks to, to, this, uh, to this conference and other initiatives, we'll move back on track and then start advancing uh, this topic uh, with all speed. If there is one topic that needs advancing, is this extending healthy life for, for people, preventing age-related diseases. And we understand the main premise of longevity science is that if we really want to extend people's healthy lives, we need to intervene into the thing that mostly shortens the life, brings most diseases, and that is the degenerative aging process. So we need to tackle the problem at the root, to tackle the degenerative aging process at the root. It's the main point of geoscience, not so trivial as it may sound in the first place, but this idea is gradually entering. Uh, the, the COVID should have convinced people that they really uh, the need to tackle health issues of all the people. Uh, we see that all the people were the most vulnerable, uh, but then the, the solution, not just in Israel, but everywhere, was to lock people up, you know, to isolate them, instead of uh, look at the underlying health, instead of trying to intervene into the gender of aging. But now, hopefully, the COVID is subsiding, so we can go back uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, advocate for, for aging health. Uh, because uh, besides COVID, uh, aging is also the main risk for all the other diseases, all the chronic diseases, infectious, non-infectious, everything. If we really want to uh, deal with preventive health, we need to deal with aging. Uh, and I would argue that because we didn't deal with aging enough, uh, we also didn't do so well in our treatment of COVID. Uh, not many people talk about it, but actually in the, in the years 20, 21, life expectancy dropped almost by two years globally. It's unheard of since the Second World War. You know, we, we should really sound the alarm and uh, go back with all force to try to, uh, to return the positive trend of increasing life expectancy as well as healthy life expectancy. An important distinction that people don't often make is that uh, we need to increase both life expectancy and healthy life expectancy. In Israel, um, uh, we have uh, the general life expectancy of 82 years and the healthy life expectancy, the time people live without disability, without chronic diseases, only 73 years. So our goal is that yes, people will live longer, but also live longer with uh, less disease, uh, so also the healthy life expectancy increases. Um, and yes, it is feasible. Uh, uh, as Noah mentioned, uh, people have been trying uh, uh, for hundreds of years, and I can say for thousands of years, as somebody who wrote the history of the field, but uh, 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 we can definitely uh, intervene into aging, definitely increase healthy life expectancy uh, or healthy lifespan in some measure. There is no law in nature that prevents us. We, we simply don't have the enough technology, enough know-how, but it is feasible. There are many classification of aging processes and for every aging process they are shown on the means of intervention that uh, can increase health and longevity for animal models and there are some human trials that we just, uh, our goal, not just as longevity scientists but also as longevity activists, uh, advocates, we need to bring this research to the clinic as fast as possible and as safely, as effectively as possible. That is our goal, that is also the goal of this conference and many other related initiatives. And of course, we cannot treat something that we cannot diagnose. You cannot, uh, you know, treat uh, degenerative aging without knowing, without being able to measure degenerative aging. So, alongside developing interventions, treatments, we also need to develop uh, biomarkers, measurements, uh, metrics of aging. Uh, they go hand in hand, not just to pre uh, predict aging health uh, for prevention, but also to uh, to be able to test the effectiveness of treatments. So, once again, metrics of aging highly important. And, uh, uh, utilizing data, health data, for this is highly important and that uh, will be one of the main um, uh, states of, of our discussion, of our work for the future. Uh, but the main idea remains that uh, yes, aging, uh, degenerative aging should be recognized as something that can be addressed by medical needs, uh, means and already we see that um, aging is recognized as a medical condition in the international classification of diseases not as a disease, we don't want to make people angry or raise some semantic issues, but it's something that can be treated as a risk factor 
um, uh, so-called um, aging-related code, and also as a set of symptoms, the so-called uh, uh, um, general uh, general symptomatics code. So yes, so we can address aging as such uh, by uh, by measuring it, by trying to intervene it to to extend hence longevity is absolutely necessary. And I'm happy to say that uh, the report that our organizations that I was involved, such as BGRF, where I'm on the board, or ILA International Longevity Alliance, where I'm on the board, were actually instrumental for introducing this um, uh, this code uh, aging related into into the ICD. But that's just a start, as we said, it's just the first step. We need to develop metrics, we need to test interventions, but still that's a good achievement that was um, uh, only done last year, very new. Uh, and uh, once again, advocacy is very important, not just the science, uh, without uh, public support, without state support, governmental support, scientists simply don't have the money to do their research, so that's why uh, advocating for aging health is very important. Uh, one more example from our advocacy in 2017, the uh, World Health Organization didn't include aging into its work program. Uh, simply, no, aging is not an issue for, for global health. So we raised um, uh, public outcry, hundreds of organizations wrote to WHO, demanded this issue is included, and it was included. You can see the head of the WHO aging division says, WHO listen, this issue is included, there are some ethics for healthy aging, but that's how it should be done in Israel and everywhere, through advocacy, through convincing decision makers that aging is important for health, it is important for us to address aging. Uh, and uh, the economics, the social needs should be, should be obvious. Uh, this is the famous the so called longevity dividend. If we are able to extend health longevity just by one year, people say, why are people will live forever? We are not talking about forever, we are talking about uh, being clever enough to extend healthy life by one year and the savings for, for our healthcare system will be billions. Uh, it was estimated that for a large country like the United States, uh, the savings from an extension of one healthy year uh, will be in, uh, the trillions uh, for several decades. For Israel it was estimated to be um, uh, about one and a half billion dollars. We are now working uh, also with, uh, with partners um, uh, and what is also working to develop more precise metrics what will the state of Israel will save by treating aging, by extending health longevity, the, the savings will be huge. So that's really a, a policy topic that needs to be advanced. And uh, Israel obviously has a tremendous potential to advance in this field uh, as a, a global technology hub, as a biotech hub. Uh, people with excellent, um, uh, with excellent skills, uh, with excellent uh, workforce, uh, connections around the world. So there's no reason why Israel should be one of the leading uh, countries in this field. Um, and as uh, Rafi Tan said, it is our goal actually to, uh, uh, I can quote in Hebrew, but it is our goal to make it so that Israel is one of the leading countries uh, for the longevity and quality of life. Uh, we have all the prerequisites, uh, prerequisites for that. Uh, we just need to apply this potential. And uh, we try to do it through, through various initiatives, uh, through policy papers, uh, through outreach. Also, uh, we will uh, soon, together with our partners, uh, the Aging Analytics Agency with Dmitry and others will be here by Gerontology Research Foundation will issue a longevity industry report for Israel. They will try to boost the longevity ecosystem for Israel, uh, show the important players uh, to draw attention to this field, to this industry. Um, uh, so that's also one of our initiatives. Uh, because right now it's not recognized that, uh, as, as much as it should. You see uh, the, um, uh, the budget for, for science, uh, the state budget for science is about two to uh, seven uh, billion uh, uh, dollars, uh, no sorry, shekels, and the, the funding for aging related issue is simply minuscule, it's simply not in comparison, uh, about half a percent, uh, you know, if, if we get uh, 10 million uh, shekel call for proposals from the Ministry of, of, of Science, we should be very thankful. Obviously, it's, it's, it's nothing, you know, in comparison to the actual need. We need to, to, to really invest massively in research, development, education for health and longevity. Uh, what else do we want to invest in? I mean, uh, come on. <laughs> it should be obvious, but, you know, it's not obvious to decision makers, but hopefully thanks to uh, to, uh, to conference like that, it will be more obvious. We really need to increase uh, budget and funding for this issue. And uh, actually, all those topics are part of the Israel National Master Plan on Aging. Not many people remember now, you know, in Israel in general we have a short memory, but in 2019 there was issued an Israel National Master Plan on Aging. There was a special committee in Knesset that sat for two years 
with the best um, experts in the field and they develop um, a national master plan on aging, different topics, social topics, but one of the topics um, uh, that I'm proud that our society introduced, the Vatican Association introduced, was enhancing research, development and education for health and longevity and prevention of age-related diseases. Uh, that's exactly the name of the topic in the Knesset uh, Master Plan of Aging. But that's also the name of this conference. Uh, the actual goal of this conference is to try to revive this, in the, this initiative uh, from back in 2019. And the three main points were to increase funding for aging research, increase education for aging research so people even know what aging is. Um, uh, there are no, almost no courses about aging anywhere, even in the, the medical schools or biology, biology departments, people don't know what aging is or sometimes not even mentioned in textbooks, so we need to increase education about aging on every level. Uh, I would say from kindergarten to, to, to matnasim to, uh, to uh, community education. Uh, and the last point is developing metrics of aging uh, in order to develop in, uh, preventive intervention. As we said at the beginning, uh, you cannot treat something you cannot measure, so we need to use uh, the excellent health data we have in Israel uh, in order to develop metrics for aging and also to test the effectiveness of the intervention. Those are the three points uh, that we hope uh, to revive uh, through outreach in Knesset that we renewed uh, through, uh, through this conference, through all the initiatives, because that is needed if uh, there is any policy policy issue that needs to be raised in Israel, it is this one. Um, and everybody can, can contribute his or her part, we don't need to wait for the government to do things, everyone can contribute to learn more about the topic, uh, to lead a healthy lifestyle, uh, lifestyle uh, to, to join together with association with others, and just to create a really strong health and longevity movement as, as, um, as citizen scientists, as, uh, as professional scientists, as advocates, as activists, and this way hopefully we can advance and of course promote inter international cooperation, uh, some with Enrico mentioned uh, with Italy, but the same way can be promoted with, with UK, with the with US. I can tell you more about the initiatives. Um, and uh, also, uh, Michael uh, told about uh, Rafi's uh, work uh, with with Poland. I can uh, disclose here. I know there is no need to keep a secret. There was actually plan to, to use some of the funding um, from uh, from uh, the uh, from the Polish uh, government to, to fund cooperation between Poland and Israel for health and longevity. Uh, so we need more initiatives like this that, that will actually go into force, that will actually bring therapies to, to people of Israel and around the world. Uh, so once again, I thank you for this opportunity uh, to, uh, to to be part of, of this of this uh, community, to be part of this um, of this movement. Uh, thanks to, to everybody uh, who came here. Uh, this concludes our first session. So why now we can uh, go for for a little break, coffee, and we can uh, be back uh, here in 15 minutes for for scientific discussion. Thank you.